fantastic to see the numbers that are here tonight. Um, it's a big step um, for a lot of you, um, getting out there and starting companies or even just expressing to people that you have a bright idea. Um, it's fabulous, that, as many of you are out here, that you are. Um, and it's also um, it's fabulous to have a program like the Bright Ideas Challenge um, here in Wellington. Um, this is the second year that it was run, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be involved in some of the stuff last year, and the numbers continue to just astound me. Um, Mary Ann Weber, who runs a big part of the um, team here, um, is res overall responsible for the, um, the Bright Ideas Challenge, has done a fabulous job with her team of bringing it together. And she just handed me a minute ago some stats, um, literally from last year. And the stats that she sort of sort of run through and, and handed me, I was sort of like, yeah, yeah, Marianne, I know all about this, um, about the stuff from last year. Um, but it's there are numbers here that I didn't know and didn't um, didn't believe, well, until she'd handed it to me. I mean, we've got one of the directors from the company, I'm able, that won the twenty-five thousand dollars last year, and that's great. I mean, they've been able to use it for a lot of stuff there. But it's not just one company winning one prize. There, through the Bright Ideas Challenge last year, as I just walked through some of the, uh, some of the stats um, here, um, one company's raised already over half a million dollars of private investment. Um, 17, um, 17, sorry, 21, um, 21 people have pitched their ideas to the Wellington Innovation Investment Community. So not only the winners in the top sort of five or six companies, but we're having big numbers of people from this program last year going through and doing some of the stuff there, which is great. As I look around tonight, I know um, and can recognise a number of you from the startup um, and innovation community here um, in Wellington. And it's, there's quite a wide, it appears to be quite a wide array of people here, people that have done it before and people that haven't necessarily been through the process before. We'll be trying to, I think, I'll be trying to target as much for some of the people that haven't been through some of the processes before and talk about, you know, some of the stuff there. But hopefully we'll probably cover a lot of stuff with, um, with, for some of, the more, um, some of the more sophisticated people here through it. I'm just amazed by some of the numbers. I'm just going to give you a couple of other ones quickly. Um, 270 people last year were invited to uh, attend some of the Escalator Capital Raising Workshops. Um, 16 qualified for um, investment support from NZ Trade and Enterprise. Um, we've, they've had one idea um, pitched to the Wellington Angel HQ um, Angel Club. Um, two ideas have been pitched to the International um, Keo Network as part of a pilot. I mean, all of you that are here should be, um, you know, should take take as much of the, um, of the learnings you can from it and the wonderful stuff that Grow Wellington are doing around this and make the most of it. Because last year was a big success, but seeing the numbers here, I'm sure we can continue on with some stuff there. All right, on we go. Um, one of the things, and again, talking about you know, experts to, to, um, to sort of amateurs through some of the process, um, it's my son's eighth birthday um, tomorrow. And, um, of course, he sort of, as eight-year-old blokes do, he came and said, you know, what I want for my birthday is a skateboard. And looking at myself as a 40-year-old investment banker, um, not a lot of skateboarding experience, um, I went down, um, grabbed him, and he was sort of bugging me on the weekend to say, come on, can we go and get the skateboard? Because we'd said, yes, you can have the skateboard. And I went down just sort of 100 metres from here um, to Cheapskates and went in there going, good grief, what am I sort of walking into? And walked into the shop there and um, was actually blown away by the experience of it all. Um, as, you know, I had literally an eight-year-old buying his first skateboard and myself, not really the skateboard guy, uh, got the hair for it, but yeah. Um, and the shop and not, well, the shop was fabulous in how they went through the process of taking a newbie sort of literally through it. But not only was the shop fabulous, the customers within the shop assisted myself and, um, and my son, and there was a lot of support for, hey, look, your first skateboard, this is a great thing. And here in Wellington, with the startup community, I like to think we've got some of the same stuff here. As I look out um, around, the, around the room tonight, I mean, I can see in the middle we've got Cameron Melhop from Star Now sitting out there, um, somebody who's built a very successful web-based business here, who's there in the crowd, probably supporting his good wife. Um, but within it all there, there are people all around you, even amongst you out there that can provide support. I like to think of the Wellington community as, um, as one that does provide support, and I would, um, I would recommend, Lid, you don't be afraid of asking. 
um, people are out there that will certainly be prepared to um, prepared to sort of help you through some of those processes. Um, although I get to MC, people ask me um, to quickly talk about a couple of things. So who am I? Um, I've got two businesses. Um, first of all, I've got an investment, a boutique investment banking firm um, called Woodward Partners, with a group of guys down Woodward Street, surprisingly. Um, one of the things we do is a lot of capital raising work. So part of what I'll come back to on this is talk about some of the capital raising um, side of things. Um, the second business I've got is a web-based business called Value Cruncher. Um, Value Cruncher was my equivalent of the bright idea that you guys are possibly sitting on right now. Um, it's a, I won't go into the boring details for the non-finance geeks out there, but it's, um, it's a finance-based website. Um, and it was my bright idea. Um, and I then, after, um, after going and sort of moving some of the th thinking through, the smartest thing that I did next was to actually socialise the idea. And one of the things we see a huge amount of the time here in the, um, especially in the capital raising area, is people will come and say, I need you to sign an NDA before I'm going to tell you anything about it. Seriously, you're wasting your time with that. Don't worry about NDAs. Don't worry about people copying your ideas. If your idea is any good, you're probably going to have to jam it down people's throats and people won't get it. And so, first of all, smartest move that I did is I basically told as many people as I could about it. And um, through some good fortune there, got introduced to um, a couple of guys around the community, um, the, again, the Wellington Innovation Community, um, most notably a guy called Rowan Simpson, um, who was one of the early investors, or he was one of the early, early employees into TradeMe, um, who had exited out of TradeMe and was doing a whole lot of work there. Who, and Rowan did a fabulous job of then connecting myself up to a group of other people. But it wouldn't have happened if I'd been um, if I'd been sitting in there just going, no, I have to, I have to hold all this idea around it. Because one of the lessons I learned was being a finance guy going, yeah, I know about this stuff. I didn't know anything about the web. And, um, and I guarantee one of the best things you can do around that is that. Um, we were fortunate, in, and Rowan came on board as an investor, and the advantage, again, in the Wellington community, we've raised a couple of rounds of capital for the business. Um, here in Wellington, and I would say, again, that Wellington network is really, really strong. And there are Angel HQ and a number of the ones that are out there. Again, I'll flick back to some of the capital raising stuff right at the end, but it's almost where you're at right now. It shouldn't be about capital raising. It's about you know, bringing the ideas forward. And the most important thing from the whole value cruncher experience for me, um, I've had a number of jobs in my life. I, don't have, I work for myself now. Um, but I imagine there's a fair few of you out there that are sitting out there going, I want to do this because I want, to, I want to work for myself. I don't necessarily feel fulfilled in some of the stuff that I'm doing. This is a personal comment from me, and all I can say around it is it's really hard, but there's not a single day when, especially with working on the value crunch stuff, which is my, definitely my bright idea, there are hard days, there are frustrating days. There's never a day that I've worked on it where I've gone, that was a waste of time. And you might go down the few blind alleys in that, but I've always personally felt huge satisfaction and working, you know, and being an entrepreneur around it. And for those of you that out there that are currently working for big corporates or doing some stuff like that, I would, I would recommend just this first bright idea might not be the one, but don't be afraid of, you know, just trying some of the stuff and I guarantee you'll get a huge amount out of it. Um, the final aspect on it, just talking about some of the stuff there, and I've got a quote from, we were fortunate, um, I've spent quite a lot of time in the States with Value Cruncher and luckily got to spend time with Yahoo and Google and a whole lot of people around it. Um, one, of the, um, one of the Harvard academics, um, Umar Haq, um, wrote in Harvard Business Review referencing us. And a number of people, and Sam Morgan's recently said it um, in an event I was at, people see working for a startup as being risky. And he was like, look, I think working for a big corporate to a large extent in this current world is, is, a risky, is almost a riskier proposition. And one of the things that I didn't expect out of my startup experiences was to actually get some of the sort of professional, personal development aspects that I got out of it. Um, being something that I'd built, being referenced in a business publication like Harvard Business Review. We've been profiled in the likes of Barron's. Um, a number of, of big influential people, again, in my world, have referenced us, and I've spent time in New York with some of my heroes of the guys that, in being a finance geek, um, that are heroes of mine, and a whole lot of my finance friends and investment bank friends, like, they don't care about the web business, they care about how you've met these guys and you've spent time with them. 
And that's something that I didn't almost expect. And it's one of the things that I would say from going through a process like this, it is, it's really, you'll get a lot out of it. And my CV, well not like, I had to produce one a couple of months ago for something else. It no longer talks about almost the work, what I've, you know, places I've worked in that. It's references to some of the stuff here that I've done. It becomes, entrepreneurship allows you, even if it isn't necessarily hugely successful or it isn't a brand name thing, it allows you to develop that professional and personal stuff that is often miles beyond some of the work stuff that you're, um, that you're doing. Because I'm, always, I'm an investment banker and we do capital raising stuff, one of the questions we're always asked is about, um, is about some of the capital raising stuff. And I'm sure a whole lot of you guys out there will be going, okay, this guy's raised cash before, you know, we're here to learn some of the stuff around it. Like I said, right now in the process you're going through, I think, you know, first work on, you know, where your idea is at. But one of the things um, some startups do need um, is cash, and it is something to consider. And as you go through um, your business plan, and as you look at it and go, hey, yeah, it'd be great if I had, you know, X dollars or I only need so many dollars to do it, you do need to consider, a, um, consider the capital raising question. We're really fortunate tonight. We've got a couple of um, entrepreneurs here that have done completely the bootstrap thing, and I'm hoping some of them will talk about, you know, the advantage of not raising cash and just going out and, you know, finding customers because you know customers are always better than bosses, um, but they're often worse than bosses too. Um, so some of those guys will talk about that. But one of the big challenges we see, and we deal with companies that are looking to raise capital. Um, versus the bootstrapping thing is um, an understanding of what it means to go and do it. There's a big difference between, you know, a big idea or a cool idea and a big opportunity. And for a lot of companies, they'll come out and go, hey, I've got this cool idea, I want to raise this money. It's not ever as simple as a cool idea equals something that an investor will invest in. Typically, investors at the early stage here, uh, at the early stage which we're talking about with the businesses here, are looking for something like a 10 to 30 times return on their money. And understanding that metric, if you look at it and go, if somebody gives me money, they're looking for me to give, you know, at least 10 times that money back to them in a four to seven year period. If you're, if you're going to go out and look for money, you need to be able to credibly talk to people and tell them a story about how you're going to achieve that. Now, if you can't, I'm not saying the idea shouldn't go ahead, and um, Trent and a number of others here will talk about some of the bootstrapping ideas around it, but capital is available for businesses, um, for early stage growth businesses here in New Zealand, but it's understanding, you know, the big opportunity, well, the, si the size of the opportunity is very, very important to some of the stuff there. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, difference between a bright idea, some, or difference between a cool idea and a big opportunity. And probably the best Wellington business that shows that is um, what Rod Drury's done with Zero. I've got an accounting degree. I worked for KPMG um, once upon a time, long, long time ago. Um, I like accounting. Don't repeat that too long. Um, but I would never have thought that an accounting-based business here it just it's you know it's accounting. It's debits and credits. But the worldwide market for um, for small business people and that want that that are only doing their accounts in Excel is massive. And Rod is building a brilliant business based on a big opportunity. And if you want to be out there raising cash, big opportunity is really important. 